This episode of the Managing Madrid Podcast is brought to you by the Managing Madrid Podcast preseason tour in the United States of America. Managing Madrid is following Real Madrid in Los Angeles, Houston, and Dallas in that order, and we're doing a podcast in each of those cities, and we'd love to meet all of you lovely Madridistas who are going to be in those cities for those games during preseason. Link to book your spot to the LA, Houston, and Dallas podcast are in the show notes. And if you come, you'll meet other Madridistas, form lifelong friendships, and possibly win some stuff signed by the Real Madrid players. This episode is also brought to you by Blossom Hotel in Houston, positioned at the axis of innovation and inspiration. Guests can enjoy the diversity of nearby neighborhoods, world-class dining options, and attractions via a complimentary Mercedes-Benz SUV within a three-mile radius and subject to availability or conveniently situated Metro Rail line. And of course, Blossom Hotel is hosting our podcast and is quite close to NRG Stadium where Real Madrid will be playing. All right, coming up is a segment taken from this week's patron podcast where Jonathan Johnson of CBS Sports, he is the PSG correspondent living in Paris. He is a friend of the show. Great guests. We talked about the Mbappe situation and how it's unraveling. Now, this was recorded on Tuesday. So it's a couple days old, but the discussion is relevant. And if you wanted access to it in real time, like Tuesday when we published it, then all you have to do is simply go to patreon.com slash managing Madrid, sign up, get a ton of bonus content, uh, exclusive access to our weekly live Zoom calls, the mailbag, more segments, all that stuff over on patreon.com slash managing Madrid. All right, enjoy today's clip. Let's go. I think what's interesting about this is that it it feels so public. Like, you know, so many clubs deal with these player issues, contract issues, private, like just privately, you know. These these letters to him have, have gone public. Um, the way they, they talk, they almost kind of speak indirectly to each other publicly I, I mean obviously there are private conversations but it's also very public and I think it's it just feels like there was more tension this year than last year last year was like we got to keep this guy at all costs you fly in the sheikh get the briefcases out he is he is part of our future project this year I feel like the tone has changed a little bit um and I like even I mean, though I someone think, yeah I go ahead com- with regards to the tone the other thing you've got to factor into this is that PSG don't like looking stupid. And they do look stupid, let's face it, because at the end of the day, you put that power to uh, of the opt-in for the final year of the contract in the player's hands. Until the player actually actions that, you can never guarantee that you know it's going to happen. So, of course, there is a lot more anger, animosity on, on PSG's end because they've been made to look stupid. You know, being in this situation is a reflection of how desperate PSG were to, keep, were to keep hold of Mbappe just over 12 months ago. You know, they offered him this phenomenal contract, uh, you know, with basically a, a way for Mbappe to, to cut it shorter by by one year. Uh, you know, so of course, they're absolutely livid, uh, you know, with, uh, with this situation happening. Uh, and I think as well, uh, you know, they feel betrayed by the way that pretty much as soon as um, Mbappe saw that Benzema was on his way out of Real Madrid unexpectedly, that suddenly that decision was taken uh, and that the decision was not even communicated to the club first, it was to the media first. And that's perhaps why PSG opted to, I wouldn't say give Mbappe a taste of his own medicine, but to kind of fight fire with fire um, and allow certain issues uh, or elements to, to go public in response. They must know that this is self-inflicted, though. I mean, I'm not sure like what they expect when there's a contract and a player is going to honor the contract, and then at that point, he has the right to make any decision he wants. Um, it's just a very, for me, it's a very bizarre way of handling things. Like, you know, this is this is why there are things that are written down. Verbal agreements mean nothing. We have things written down in stone so that there's no disagreements. Like, okay, I have a contract. I play it out. At that point, I have the right to do anything I want. So I guess that part is a little bit shocking to me as to why they're so offended by him honoring his contract and having the right to to choose at that at that point. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, I do. But also at the same time, there's certain elements that can't be written into contracts in France. It's just it's, it's part of the, the law that governs the game. For example, you know, minimum fee release clauses, which are the standard uh, in Spain, they don't exist in France. So you can't put a value like that uh, on a player's head. It's just it's not possible legally. Uh, you know, so, you know, in sort of the way that PSG uh, and Mbappe kind of came to this agreement, you know, they PSG were always, uh, you know, going to be gambling on sort of Mbappe keeping his word, you know, like Mbappe speaking publicly about, um, you know, not wanting to leave PSG on a free, something that Nessa El Halafi referenced just last week when unveiling Luis Enrique. Uh, you know, when, you know, all of this is sort of, uh, you know, based around a lot of sort of verbal uh, agreements because it's stuff that you can't put down on paper to, you know, to stand up in court essentially if needed. Uh, you know, there's always the risk that you're going to be, uh, you know, made to look uh, stupid. And that, I think, is a large reason why PSG uh, are so irate uh, with Mbappe at this moment in time. So I wanted to get uh, your thoughts on this. There is this supposed threat from PSG that if you're not going to renew, we're going to sell you this summer. Of course, that that part is a bit out of their control because Mbappe has to agree to a sale. Uh, but then there is this reported threat that will just not play you. If you're going to stay, you're going to be sitting on the bench. How real is that? And is there any chance that that would actually happen where you have this, a figure like Mbappe, who is arguably the best player in the world, just sitting on a bench for a year? Is that remotely possible? I mean, I will temper my response by saying that I don't think it'll come to that with somebody like Mbappe, somebody who is capable of putting that team on his shoulders and carrying them alone at times. But I will say that it has happened in the past with PSG players. Look at what happened with Fabio, the final few months of his contract with PSG before joining Juventus. He was sent to rot in the reserves, didn't play. Uh, you know, and his, he, you know, he, his PSG career, uh, you know, really just petered out uh, before he made that free transfer to, to Juventus. So has it happened before with big name, uh, you know, French international players? Yes, it has. Do I think it'll happen with Mbappe? I don't think it'll go that far. It would look bad for Mbappe and, and sort of his brand. It would look bad for PSG as a club, given, uh, you know, Mbappe's status. And also, uh, you know, the fact that PSG is supposedly trying to enter into this new era under Luis Enrique with all these new signings and sort of trying to rebuild the team. Uh, you know, so I think there's going to have to be some compromise somewhere. And that compromise is obviously either going to have to be Mbappe extending his contract, maybe for even just one more year so that he can potentially be sold in 2024. I have always personally believed that the logical time for him to sign off uh, from French football and, and with PSG is in 2024 after the Olympics uh, in Paris, when he could potentially win gold with France. Uh, you know, but do I see him reaching that point um, and leaving PSG on a free transfer? No, I don't. It's, you know, it's very difficult to, to see PSG allowing that to happen. So we're sort of a week away from Mbappe potentially returning to preseason training with PSG. Uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what might change sort of in the next, uh, you know, sort of week or 10 days, uh, you know, especially before PSG, uh, you know, leave France and Europe for uh, for Asia and uh, Japan for their tour. It's, yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's a tough one to call. Uh, and obviously there's the, this supposed deadline at the end of July, uh, you know, for basically there to be a resolution about Mbappe's future. You can probably, you know, stick pretty good money on, uh, you know, that deadline being pushed back, uh, you know, beyond the end of July as well. But, you know, so much now is is going to ride on sort of what, um, you know, both PSG and Mbappe uh, are prepared to, to compromise on. Because like I said earlier, at the end of the day, all of this stuff is only stuff that can really be agreed verbally. It can't be put down on paper. You can't, uh, you know, realistically put down that, you know, Mbappe will be allowed to leave for a set value uh, on a set date. Uh, you know, because it's just, it's impossible in French law to write it into a contract like that. So, yeah, it's a it's a tricky one, uh, you know, and on both sides, you can say, are playing high stakes poker right now because somebody at some point, uh, you know, somewhere is likely to, to lose out uh, unless both sides agree to, to compromise to a degree. Yeah, I mean, I think we can all agree that we would like a decision to be made one way or the other so we can be 
get on, get on with it, get on with our lives. But I think you're right. I think that 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 date is going to get pushed back when we're going to find out. Um, what was like? How much of this tension is absolutely new, and how much of it was brewing before, like in last season? The reason I ask this is because I'm sure you saw that there was a quote by Leonardo, who is of course PSG's former sporting director in La Parisia, and, and he says, "quote With his behavior over the past two years." Mbappe demonstrates that he is not yet a player capable of really leading a team. He is a great player, not leader. He's been here for the last six years. Five different clubs have won the Champions League without him. PSG existed before and after him. It's time he leaves. Um, Is this just like Leonardo just kind of speaking new thoughts? Or like was this kind of like the tension that was lingering before he left? No, I think this is Leonardo settling some old scores. Let's not forget that Leonardo, you know, leaving essentially paved the way to to Mbappe extending his contract because Leonardo leaving allowed Luis Campos to be appointed. Luis Campos, obviously somebody who has a better relationship with Mbappe and his entourage than than Leonardo. And obviously Leonardo as well, um, you know, probably still bearing a few grudges uh, from his PSG exit 12 months ago. So I think, you know, we can take sort of those quotes uh, with a pinch of salt. Obviously, there is a little element of truth in it as well. Uh, you know, you can't dispute the facts. Uh, you know, PSG, uh, you know, haven't sort of come close to winning the Champions League or as close as they should have done, um, you know, with him uh, in the team. Uh, and the time that they did get to the Champions League finally couldn't play to the best of his ability because he, you know, was being hampered by an injury just out, just after COVID. So, uh, you know, I think there is an element of truth in the fact that there was a lot of tension, uh, you know, a lot of issues. And, you know, there's a lot of frustration on Mbappe's part as well. PSG have been pretty much a disaster in the way that they've been run the last couple of years and it's played out ever more publicly year upon year and just you know another season of Champions League humiliation this time in the hands of Bayern Munich uh, you know I think that you know would naturally uh, you know frustrate any sort of superstar player that they've you know agreed to be part of this project and it's not really just sort of living up to expectations and promises that were made so you know I do think that there is an element of truth that that sort of relationship has kind of been deteriorating over time but uh, you know equally I think you know you need to also factor in the reality um, of PSG keeping Mbappe just over 12 months ago it took a massive financial effort for PSG to to keep Mbappe to sign that new contract could Mbappe really expect PSG to then immediately embark on, you know, wholesale changes to the squad, uh, you know, based on the money that they were putting into his extended contract? It's a bit unrealistic if you if you ask me. Uh, you know, and I think, you know, there there's an element of impatience uh, on Mbappe's side, um, you know, in terms of sort of PSG renewing the project. And I think now, when you look at the deals that PSG have done so far this summer, the squad's actually set up a lot better to potentially succeed you know notably with regards to Europe than it was before so maybe uh you know if Mbappe sort of looks at it in that light you know he might feel a little more optimistic about PSG's chances this coming season but equally when there's so much damage done to a relationship between a player and club you know there's not really that much sort of wiggle room left uh you know after what's already been achieved 